Hey, hello. Welcome back to the Sunday Serving Channel where you come every week for words for the gospel of hope, of joy, of courage, of inspiration. And on this beautiful sunny January morning, early in the year, we really need a, a word of, of hope. And here it is. I'd like to today take you to the letter to the Philippians. So Paul, the Apostle Paul, wrote a lot of epistles, a lot of letters to different churches. So here's one that the whole theme is about rejoicing in the Lord. Not rejoicing in fun things or wonderful circumstances that he experienced, but rejoicing in the Lord in spite in spite of suffering, in spite of trials, of persecution, of imprisonment, maybe of uh, sickness or death, you know, all these things. I don't know about you, but you know, in life there's, there's a lot of challenges already. We're in this new year and I know personally in my life around friends and of the community, there's been sickness, there's been trials, there's been a death of a dear sister who struggled with cancer for many years. But in spite of all those things, we need to rejoice in Christ and Jesus in the hope of the coming of the kingdom and the gospel. So here it is. Paul writes, Yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. So that's the whole theme. It doesn't matter if I live or die or what happens. I'm going to claim the victory and the joy in Jesus and salvation and God's love. What a beautiful example. Something to hold on to, something to give us all hope. And then he goes on in the second chapter, I won't read the whole book because, or the whole letter because uh, I know some of you will get tired and, and turn this off, so I'd rather hit the highlights here. So in the second chapter goes, so if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. So there it talks to us. How do we treat each other? Um, how do we become united in the big things, in the important things, in Christ, in, in love, in service, in, in looking at other people as uh, more important than ourselves? That's what brings purpose and unity and joy and then he goes on, I love the, the third chapter. It says, finally, brothers, rejoice in the Lord. And he keeps on saying that, right? Rejoice. You know, you think you get tired of that. To write the same thing to you is no trouble to me and is safe for you. So he's saying, I'm going to repeat this, this theme, because it's, it's what's true. It's what's right. It's good for you. And um, then he talks about all the things he could, he could lean on, his upbringing, his, the fact that he was well-educated and knew and followed all the laws of Moses. But no, that, that doesn't count. That's not important. And he was warning the people he was writing to, don't, don't try to base your lives on being right, on being correct. Don't listen to people who pick on, on little things and, and are full of you know, legalisms and laws. But look at the big things. So he says, um, whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. So all the things that were, you think would be important to him, counts as lost for the sake of Christ. Um, indeed, I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. Now in, in Paul's day the word rubbish it only had one meaning and that was excrement. So all that good stuff, huh, that's, that's poop, that's nothing. That's, you know, the only thing that matters is Jesus and love and joy. 
and to be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Now, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but here, this is important for you, for us, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. So no matter what, persevere, press on because Jesus has made you his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on to the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I love that line about forgetting what lies behind and pressing onward to the goal in joy, knowing what Christ Jesus has done for us and what he is calling us to do. And he goes on, but our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. And then the final chapter, chapter 4, there's, we, we can't end a segment without reading from that. And I'm sure you're, you, may, you may be familiar with these words, read them often, but here it is. Rejoice in the Lord always, always. There's no exceptions there. It doesn't say on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, maybe Saturdays. Always, whether you're happy, whether you're sad, whether good things happen or bad things happen, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What wonderful words. Rejoice always. Make your request to God. And the peace. And that's, that's missing in so many lives. What is peace? The peace of God, not the peace of the world. It surpasses understanding. It's letting go and letting God. And it always is connected to joy, to thanksgiving, to faith. So he ends this here. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. So may the peace of God be with you and with all of us. God bless you. Rejoice in the Lord always. Have a wonderful week. Remy, let's go. Time to go and rejoice in the, in the Lord in the woods here. Ah. Let's see if we can find some muskrats. <laughs>